In 2002, Elon Musk founded SpaceX with one single visionary goal in mind. That goal? Make human beings a multi-planetary species. Since then, the company has come a long way in advancing towards this goal. SpaceX has pushed boundaries and revolutionized rocket technology, giving us a number of innovations, including, but not limited to, the most reusable rockets in history, the first commercial spacecraft to duck with the space station, not to mention increased efficiency and capabilities in getting payload to orbit. SpaceX has managed to do what no commercial company has ever done before. They did what no one thought was even possible, and they did all of it in almost less than a decade at a fraction of the cost thought possible. All these designs and innovations have been stepping stones to a much larger vision. The company's latest vehicle, the BFR BFS, is arguably SpaceX's most innovative and ambitious design concept so far. It draws on a compilation of technologies and lessons learned from all SpaceX vehicles. Falcon 1, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon. In a September 2016 presentation at the IEC, International Astronomical Congress, Musk unveiled the concept of an interplanetary transport system to the public. The initial premise of the 2016 presentation was to build a vehicle that can improve the cost per ton of getting humans to Mars by a factor of 5 million percent. The cost of getting to Mars is a huge problem. Using conventional methods, this cost is estimated to be expensive, really expensive. According to Elon, it's around $10 billion. So the fraction of people who can actually afford to go to Mars is small, really small. In addition to this, you couldn't even go if you wanted to. Why? Because a vehicle that addresses the complexities and challenges of taking humans to Mars doesn't even exist. Even if you had infinite money, you couldn't get there. In short, it's a problem of economies of scale. There simply aren't enough paying customers to justify the production of the vehicle. This is the exact nature of the problem SpaceX is solving. They are seeking to reduce costs in order to increase the number of paying customers in order to justify the development of the vehicle. Reducing cost to Mars So how do you reduce the cost of getting to Mars? Well, according to Musk, there are four major factors that need to be addressed. If you've seen The Martian or National Geographic's Mars, virtually all of these have been highlighted in some way. Here are the four factors. Making the vehicle reusable, refilling in orbit, producing propellant on Mars, and using the right propellant. The vehicle has to be photo reusable. This one should be slightly obvious by now. Throwing away a rocket booster or spacecraft after use will make it impossible to ever get to Mars. It's analogous to manufacturing then throwing away a brand new 747 or A380 every time you took a trip across the Atlantic, or buying a new car every time you had to go somewhere. It's crazy. The second factor is refilling in orbit. Refilling in orbit is extremely important for a number of reasons. If you had to take all the fuel required for a full mission to Mars from Earth, you'd end up with a really big rocket, a huge rocket. The rocket would be so big in fact that you need large amounts of fuel to even get it off the ground far less into orbit. This in turn would increase the size of your rocket, which would increase the amount of fuel needed, which would increase the size of your rocket. You get the point. This is the nature of the rocket equation. More on the rocket equation in another video. Propellant production on Mars is the third factor. Producing propellant on Mars will make it possible to have a fuel deeper, or in simpler terms, a gas station. The fourth factor deals with the nature of the propellant. In order to manufacture propellants on Mars, you have to actually be able to manufacture propellant on Mars. There are a variety of propellants that can be made using Martian material or Martian in situ resources. The most feasible propellant is identified as methane, which can be extracted by the Sabatier process. Now, as you can probably tell, these four factors greatly influence the overall design of Starship and Super Heavy, but in particular, they affect the design of the spaceship. Unlike the booster, which just has to get to orbit, Starship has to operate under significantly more complex environments and perform much more complex functions. Getting all this done seems like a really difficult task. SpaceX has simplified the process a bit by choosing to focus on key subsystems that have the highest potential to affect the performance of the vehicle. In other words, they are looking for the 20% design changes that will produce an 80% solution or return. Since 2016, the company has developed a new carbon fiber matrix for its deep cryo tanks and is extensively pushing the development of its Raptor engines while continuing to perfect propulsive landing. 
The 2016 version of the vehicle was measured at a height of 122 meters and a diameter of 12 meters. It was later scaled down, probably to save costs, to a height of 106 meters and diameter of 9 meters. Between 2016 and now, the vehicle has become more streamlined with certain variations of aerodynamic surfaces added for braking in the Martian atmosphere. Engine placements and configurations have also changed on the vehicle. The name of the vehicle, on the other hand, has also undergone some iterations. Before 2016, it was called the Mars Colonial Transporter. In 2016, it was the Interplanetary Transport System. In 2017, Musk came up with the codename BFR BFS. He toyed with the idea of the Heart of Gold, which is the spaceship in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But in November 2018, he finally decided on the name Starship and Super Heavy. Funding is still a huge problem. How is SpaceX funding this? In early 2016, when the concept was first announced to the public, SpaceX didn't really have a good idea of how they were going to fund the development of BFR. In 2017, the company announced that it had a bit of a breakthrough, or as Musk put it, a realization in solving the problem. Consolidating the vehicles. That realization is to consolidate all the functions of SpaceX's current vehicles into Starship and Super Heavy. This will make Starship and Super Heavy the most versatile space vehicle ever. The vehicle will be able to transport people and goods not just to Mars, but also to the ISS, the Moon, and even point-to-point -point on Earth. Of course, it will take some time before SpaceX will be able to do this. The company still has its contracts with NASA and the US government, so it will have to utilize Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon until its customers feel comfortable transitioning to Starship and Super Heavy. The company currently plans to produce Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon and keep these vehicles in stock, and eventually transition to its full focus, Starship and Super Heavy. While consolidation will definitely help to reduce costs, SpaceX still requires as much funding as possible to continue its operations. A trip around the moon, an investment that leaves a legacy. In September 2018, at the annual Starship Super Heavy BFR BFS, whatever you want to call it, update, Musk made a huge announcement. BFR had its first paying customer, a Japanese billionaire, art curator, and founder of the clothing company Zozo. MZ is currently proposing an incredibly inspiring project called Dear Moon, which will take six to eight artists from around the world on a trip around the moon. It's his hope that the art created after the trip will have a positive and moving effect on people. It's a unique project that will unite the arts and the sciences and potentially will have significant humanitarian effects. If successful, it will surely be remembered as a critical moment in our history. Here's a clip from the Dear Moon project. The crew will spend a week in space. What will they feel when they see the moon? When they see Earth in full view? And what will they create? Their works will certainly become a legacy for humankind. An awe-inspiring, global, universal art project is about to begin. Dear Moon. While it's unclear how much MZ paid for the trip, according to Elon, he's the real deal. The Dear Moon flight is projected for 2023. That's just a few years away. The company also has a cargo mission planned for Mars in 2022, as well as a crew mission to Mars planned for 2024. While the trips to Mars and eventual construction of a base on Mars are a critical part of SpaceX's goal, the company has briefly shifted its attention to the moon. This is fueled not only by MZ's investment, but also on increased interest by NASA to develop infrastructure on the moon. To say SpaceX has a lot of work to do is a drastic understatement. The company is pushing so many boundaries for commercial space travel. They're literally creating spacecraft that once only seemed like figments of the imagination. Vehicle development is happening fast. Since the start of this year, the company has already done a lot. In early January, the company released pictures of one of its test vehicles, affectionately named Starhopper, as it will be performing hop tests. To many, the vehicle seemed to pop out of nowhere. The ship has a pretty sleek and futuristic liquid silver look. Unlike traditional SpaceX rockets that are composed of carbon fiber, Starhopper and Starship will be made with stainless steel, another new Starship design change. The vehicle is being developed and built at SpaceX's new facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, and was expected to have its first flight by the first quarter of 2019. 
Q1 testing was delayed though, due to high winds tipping the rocket over and damaging the nose cone. SpaceX is still aiming for an aggressive schedule though, so Q1 tests and early Q2 tests are probably still possible. During the test, Starhopper will fly as high as an altitude of 5,000 meters on three Raptor engines. Conclusion As mentioned earlier, SpaceX is moving fast. We definitely have a lot to look forward to throughout 2019 with the company. Once these test flights are completed, it probably won't be too long before the company launches Starship into orbit.